Hello and welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl. And we're going to talk about something a little bit different today than our usual uh, either first play video or Warhammer the Old World video. So uh, recently, or certainly over the last few streams I've done, I've had people come in and say sort of, you know, what gear am I using? As in, you know, what uh, keyboard, mouse and so on. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a short video talking about what I personally think is the best gaming gear. Uh, and, and that is a personal opinion. And I would certainly say that with everything that in terms of particularly headsets, mice, keyboards, it is a very personal thing and it's how you feel. And if you do have the opportunity to try before you buy as in maybe your mate has that mouse go around his house and uh and, and try it out alternatively uh you know if you're able to go to somewhere in the uk it would be a pc world um in 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 europe maybe a media mart in us a best buy where they have the mice and the keyboards out on a display shelf you know get your hand on it uh, and you know see how the keys feel see how the mouse feels the weight um you know depending what type of grip you have as well if you've got that sort of palm grip or the claw style grip of the mouse so very very personal choice but these are the things that i've landed on after uh, what decades and decades of gaming when did i start i probably started gaming in around um the very very early 90s maybe even slightly before that uh with my first computer being a spectrum with the tape player but without further ado we're not this isn't a trip down memory lane this is to look at what is uh the best gaming gear in my opinion so in terms of where we're starting, we're going to start with the mice. And I actually use three different mice depending on what I'm doing. So first up is the Logitech Super Light Pro. And if I had to pick only one of the mice and I wasn't a dedicated gamer to an MMO style World of Warcraft, Star Wars Old Republic type game, then it would be this mouse. The Logitech Super Light Pro is absolutely outstanding. There it is there. You can see it, and uh, this is the box that it comes in. Um, overall, um, it's an excellent mouse. The lightweight is really, really noticeable. And even though it is lightweight, it really does feel like it's still robust. Now, I generally, generally use this mouse um, if I'm doing FPS games or games where I'm certainly going to be doing some type of uh, 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 quick movements. Um, so, you know, take Starfield, for example, RPG, but there's quick movements in the shooting in there, Cyberpunk, as well as your standard Battlefield and, and other type of games like that. So a game where there is really fast movements, um, uh, I generally really do like the Logitech Super Light Pro. And as I say, if I had to pick one and I wasn't an MMO gamer, it would definitely be that mouse. As I say, it's amazing for how light it is, um, for how uh, robust it still feels. And I have to say, out of the three sets of software that you can consider here the corsair the razor and the logitech i have had better results uh, more stable and less issues with the logitech software than i have had with the razor and the corsair software so that's all, always something to consider is that with pretty much any peripheral these days there's usually some type of software that goes with it so that's the first one. Now, the second mouse I've got here, which is the Razer Naga Pro. And you can see it there. And you can see this is the box it comes in with the three different sides you can fit to it. Now, this is a really good and flexible mouse. I do generally use it with the 12 button side. And that's because I use this mouse when I'm playing World of Warcraft, Star Wars Old Republic, Guild Wars. I really do like the 12 buttons. I've tried other mice that have multiple buttons like this um, going, you know, all the all across the board, the, the different the rats and the Corsairs and so on. And uh, and I really do actually like the Razor Nagra. It really does suit my palm style. Um, I do, I really do like wireless mice these days. You know, there, there's just generally no issues with them. Uh, the battery life is pretty good. You know, occasionally you have to charge it, but but overall, you know, wireless mouse, definitely the way forward these days. 
you know, and it is nice that you can change the side if you only want the six buttons, if you only want the two buttons even. Uh, maybe nice if you've got a laptop and you're on the move, just taking the one mouse with those three sides um, pretty good as well. But overall, I really do like the feel of the 12 buttons. Uh, I do feel like that you can tell uh, quite easily which row you're on, which button you're pressing. And the Razer Naga has been my go-to um, for quite some time now, say particularly with the likes of World of Warcraft, Star Wars The Old Republic and Guild Wars um, for all those abilities. Uh, as said, I really do like the Logitech software. The Razer software is okay. Um, it, uh, it does use more resources than you than you would ideally like. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, it, it's okay. It's okay. Of the three here, it definitely is the worst in terms of issues I've had with the software. Um, changing one thing or doing something on one peripheral have affecting other ones. So, yeah, the, the Razer software so far is my least favorite. But as an MMO mouse, this is definitely my choice. So third up, and you go, why the heck have you got three? Well, the third one there is a Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro SE, and that's this one here. Now, one of the things you'll notice when you when you hold this up, it's actually got these little flaps um, where you can actually hold, where your thumb and your fingers rest on. And I actually really like that when I'm doing long periods of... Uh, non-twitch, as in non-moving uh, your hand fast style gaming. It is quite weighty, um, but it's, I actually find it quite a nice, um, uh, relaxing mouse in that regard, um, the weight there being quite precise. So, you know, if I'm doing something, whether it would be a PowerPoint presentation or even something maybe like a Total War game, or, or something along those lines, something a bit much slower paced, a bit more strategic, or as I say, doing things um, on the computer. I actually really do like the Corsair Dark Core. Um, it's uh, It's got a nice feel to it. It's nice and robust. Uh, RGB, well, that's a personal preference, whether you like the lighting or not, but overall a pretty nice and comfortable mouse with a with a nice weight to it. Yes, it's it's not the lightest mouse in the world, and between the Logitech and that one, it's a world apart, um, but that can have its own um, feel. So that's, that's what I use the Corsair for. Now, I do have a Corsair case, and I do use the Corsair software already for things like my RAM, uh, So uh, uh, and as you will come on to the keyboard. So um, using the Corsair software specifically for the mouse, actually not really a problem. It was already on uh, my PC. However, um, not quite as robust as the Logitech software, um, but not too bad. I certainly haven't had the same level of problems I've had with the Razer, and playing with one peripheral hasn't affected anything else. So the Corsair software, not too bad overall, um, but uh, but not uh, in the, the realm of the Logitech software. So there we go. That's it for the mouse. Next up is a keyboard. So I have the Corsair K100 uh, with the Cherry MX speed switches. Now I really like the Cherry MX speed switches. They're not very loud, they're very quiet, um, but I just like the feel of them. Uh, and that's something that you really do need to get for yourself in terms of uh, um, how you want it, you know, does the clicking bother you? Um, uh, you know, sort of, you know, how much of the of the weight of your finger on the key do you like before it actually activates and so on. It's got some nice features with the sort of the media thing here with the roller bar for volume, for example, and sort of this media play uh, buttons here, which I don't tend to use that much, but but can be nice. This here. Um, for some of your RGB lighting. But what I really do like is the G keys. I do use those quite a lot. I don't use a stream deck when I'm streaming. Uh, and actually, uh, you can use um, uh, some software which turns these keys essentially into a six button stream deck, which is really, really nice when I'm streaming uh, to be able to change scenes and so on. Overall, really nice keyboard. It feels um, weighty. It is expensive as the K100, but it does feel like that. My one tiny complaint on, on this is I don't feel like the connection of the keys uh, to the keyboard is that robust. Having dropped a pair of headphones um, just onto one of those G keys, it did actually snap 
the key at the joint didn't actually come off it actually snapped it in place so um that's rather disappointing so for you know this kind of price keyboard you expect a bit more robustness um everything else has been pretty pretty fine and it, and it still is in uh, excellent condition it's just um yeah, that robustness of the connection to the key. So that is one downside I've had. But having come from the Razer Black Widow series, which I was using before, uh, uh, before this one, I am much happier with the Corsair and I've had much better reliability, both with the Corsair keyboard in terms of the keys and also the software, as we said earlier. So Corsair keyboard, definitely a favorite. And the wrist rest here is definitely one of the most comfortable I've used for me personally. Uh, the right width, the right elevation, uh, and uh, and uh, easy to uh, easy to look after. Doesn't get too hot and sweaty as well. So, yeah, Corsair K100 keyboard. That is what I'm using at the moment, and and highly recommended. Next up is a gamepad. Now, some games, particularly like old retro games, certain flying games like Ace Combat, racing games, so whether you're talking about dirt or, or something like that, I actually like to use a gamepad. Even fighting games as well, you know, often I will use a gamepad for those. Now, I've been a bit of a, you know, in terms of since PlayStation 1 came out, I've been a bit of a PlayStation fanboy. I've always preferred the PlayStation, and I really do like the PlayStation controller. So I was kind of like, what gamepad am I going to go for when it comes to the PC? And I thought I'd give this one a go, and I actually really like it, which is the Xbox Elite Series 2. Very, very pricey, but my word, can you see kind of where that price went? Fully wireless connectivity with the PC has been outstanding. Every game I've played, it's worked without flaw, straight through Steam, no issues at all. Uh, it comes with a really nice travel case as well. You can see down here. And you can even, there's even a hole in the case where you can charge it while it's in the case. Uh, you've got a different selection of buttons here depending uh, and, and sticks, depending on, on what you prefer. And even the ability to change uh, the D-pad from this version to the standard cross that you see here. So overall, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised having used playstation gamepads for my playstation for a long time that when i wanted a gamepad for my pc as i now pretty much don't use my consoles at all solely playing games on the pc so hence you know in the past i would have potentially bought mortal kombat on on my playstation i now just buy it on the pc and use the gamepad uh, for that so a really really nice gamepad um, it is very, very expensive, um, but for me personally, it was definitely worth the money. You can see where it went uh, and is very nice overall, and that carry case makes it really nice if you're traveling around as well. I often keep a lot of retro games on my laptop when I'm traveling because then I can get more games because they're not as big on a smaller hard drive. So gamepad-wise, Xbox Elite Series 2, very, very good. Speaker wise, now I'm not always wearing a headset. In fact, often, you know, I like to sit there and actually uh, not wear a headset, not get hot. You know, people aren't sleeping in the house or they're out or whatever. So I can actually get some good sound, have some music, whatever. And uh, I was using a, a Logitech sort of 5.1 surround uh, system for many, many years, which, which served me very well and gave me that surround sound feel. But it took up a lot of space with a massive sub underneath the desk, speakers, wires everywhere and so on. And I decided that it was time to change it up. And I'd looked at a lot of different options. I'd read a lot of different reviews online. And I finally settled on the Razer Leviathan V2. Um, its size is absolutely excellent. It's probably, what, the same uh, width as a 23-inch uh, monitor. Um, and the sound quality out of it is excellent. Again, connectivity, it's worked really well uh, through the Elgato software that I'm using, uh, again, which we'll come on to. And to be honest, I haven't really had to play with the Razer software. Yes, I've got the Razer software. Yes, it's on there. But I haven't really had to mess with the Razer software on it because I do um, all my sort of sound and everything through the Elgato software. So um, not had those issues. Razer Leviathan, the, the, the sound quality on it, um, really good. Uh, and even when you're playing a game and having music at the same time, I'm finding, finding that there's uh, no issues at all. It's very clear. Um, uh, very consistent so 
very, very nice indeed. Next up is a headset. Now, this is super personal choice, and uh, I gravitate to this for a particular reason. So, Razer Black Shark V2. Now, these are very much in the shape of a pilot headset. That is my background. I do find pilot headphones, headset styles very, very comfortable. Now, that said, my previous set, again, for many years, I'd been on the Sennheiser path. I'd loving the Sennheiser PC350s, and I'd been using Sennheiser PC350s uh, up until one headset before this where I actually gave the Razer Kraken a go. Really didn't like the Razer Kraken. I found them quite heavy and uncomfortable overall. But one of the things on the Sennheisers, those leather ear pads, they do wear after a while. They also get hot and sweaty. And the microphone, um, even when you're not using it, of course, is still attached. There's a little bit extra weight there and is folded up out of the way. So I moved to the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro and I do not regret it. Now, being wireless, they're a little bit heavier. Uh, so you do have the option to go for the wired version. It does take some of the weight out. The microphone, if you're using a separate microphone, you don't still have the weight on these headphones. You just unplug it and it's gone. Uh, and I really do like the style of the Boone mic. I, when I've used it, it's been very clear. Personally, I prefer a separate mic. So not having to have it actually on my headphones is really, really nice. It's not in the way, it's not folded up, and it's not that extra weight. It's also got a very, very nice cushion and, uh, and material around the ears. It doesn't get sweaty and hot, uh, and it doesn't wear away. I use them a lot, and they are still in incredibly uh, good condition. Uh, in terms of connectivity, I have occasionally had the issue where it drops out, um, but that is very, very rare. Uh, but it is something to note. So just being conscious of, you know, where you're putting your little dongle that you're plugging in uh, to your PC, however you're doing that, making sure it's not too obstructed. You know, is it is it behind the PC if you've got it somewhere else? That's something to to consider because there has been occasions where it has dropped out uh, and moving things around has helped it. So just one thing to watch is where your dongle is and how obstructed it is compared to where you're sitting with those headphones on. But these are my headphones of choice. You can see I'm wearing them right now and uh, they are excellent and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly recommended. Very comfortable, very adjustable. I have quite a small head and uh, and so sometimes on headsets you can't get that adjustment small enough uh, whereas these fit absolutely perfectly you can see they're right on top of my head i am pretty much down at the the bottom of that adjustment but it does fit very well indeed so that is my recommendation for headset okay on to the microphone so uh, i am currently using the elgato wave 3 now, prior to this, I've been using things like the Razer Siren. Uh, I've obviously used the boom mics that have come with headsets. Uh, and I really wanted to switch it up. I really wasn't that happy with the quality of my Razer Siren. Plus, I was having issues again with the software. Moved to the Elgato Wave 3. And overall, as a microphone with the pop filter. And you can see it on, on a boom stand there, which is exactly what I have. Um, I really, really like it. I like the fact you can just touch the top of it to instantly mute it. You've got a gain control on there as well. You can see what the gain is and has been very, very clear. So uh, very, very happy with the with the actual hardware of the Elgato mic. Now, I'm using the Elgato software that goes with it, and that has been tricky to use. If I look at it where I'm using uh, my Streamlabs OBS um, in terms of having uh, the Razer Leviathan speakers actually is the, is probably the easiest thing switching between headset and speakers. Um, but certainly there has been a lot of issues with that Elgato software uh, and, and an OBS. So if you are streaming, that can give you quite some challenges. Uh, so it's taken quite a bit to, to get to use it. And there are still issues. There seem to be updates every five minutes. Um, so the software for it, not thrilled about the hardware, very happy with it. So it's one of these things, and it seems to be a common theme on, on a number of things. I really quite like the hardware, but the software hasn't been uh, up to the same standard. 
and I certainly have considered looking at other alternatives in the future. We'll see how long we stick with this one. But for now, this is my choice. Say so it's very the hardware itself very good. Um, I just wish the software on the Elgato Wave 3 was a bit better. And next up is the camera. What camera are we using? Well, we've used all sorts of different webcams in the past, you know, cheap Logitech ones and so on. And we finally settled when we started streaming using the Razer Keo X. Now, uh, in terms of its location, it fits nicely on the monitor. You can see the stand there. Overall, am I happy with this? It's okay. Uh, I think the quality is not as good as maybe as some other options, but for the price I picked it up at, it was in the sale. Um, it, it's good enough. You can see here, this is the quality we've got. I've also run it with a green screen. Works perfectly well with the green screen as well. Overall, not too bad. Um, it did take a lot of fiddling to get it right and get the right quality out of it. Um, there definitely is better out there, though I do think you are going to pay more money for it. So overall, not too bad. And, and Razer, you know, for once saying Razer is not the most expensive thing, um, is, is, is unusual, but uh, certainly, um, you know, has worked out for me. It's what I'm still currently using. Uh, it's been pretty reliable. I haven't had really any issues with it. Um, or you know either with the razor software or into the obs so you know that i certainly can't complain the software's been fine the quality's okay but could be better and i think that's really where you have to start thinking about price point you know how much do you want to spend and what result you want at the end of it for where i am right now this is perfectly adequate and i'm very happy with it i do like the ease of mounting it just on top of the monitor i don't have to have a separate stand for it anywhere or a shelf on the wall or anything like that so very, very much okay and, and i definitely keep an eye out to get it at a reduced price and and that is uh that that would be the way for it good value for the money if you can find it on offer uh would be my sort of finishing line on the camera and finally so you've got all these devices um, you've got three mice, you've got headsets with dongles, and you've got um, speakers and game pads and everything else. Well, how the heck do you connect it all? There's never going to be enough USB slots on your PC. So um, I actually really like the Streamplify Hub Control 7. And we've got it here. There you go. That is the box that you can see. Um, why do I like it? Well, um, it's really nicely laid out you've got um, this cable management piece behind it which makes it very easy the ability to individually switch uh, each one off so you don't have to have everything running all the time which is very nice um, RGB yeah if you really want the RGB side of it uh, but also it does come with uh, USB 3 for fast charging as well. So you do get the quick charge on it. So that's just something to remember. Uh, and it does come with these handy little plastic tokens. So you can actually either with numbers or you can say, you can see here, you've got one, two, and three. You've got camera, you've got microphone, you've got light, you know, and all sorts. So that's really handy as well because often, you know, which cable, what's in what thing. And there's actually quite enough in there. You know, there's a head headset one in there. There's a mobile phone one. So you can actually have one for your mobile phone charging cable as well. Um, so, yeah, this is this is definitely uh, really thoroughly recommended. As you can see, I've got seven different USB slots as well as what you've got in your PC should be more than enough uh, for, for, for everything. Bearing in mind, I'm also using two ring lamps as well, which are USB. Um, so, you know, we've got more than enough there uh, to, uh, to, to do everything that we need. So that's something to think about as well is if you are... Um, gaming and you've got lots of stuff or if you're wanting to stream or record videos and so on you're going to have lots of different peripherals you're going to need somewhere to plug it in and Streamplify Hub Control 7 would be my choice. There you go guys that is my take on my personal opinion of what I think is the best gaming hardware and it is what I personally use. Um, to back up that, nothing that I have said in this video, I am not sponsored by anybody and I am not paid to, to say any of this. This is just 
uh, my opinions uh, to to uh, everybody out there to hopefully give you some ideas of uh, someone who's actually been using lots of different uh, pieces of hardware and has settled on these and the reasons why I have done that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, though, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more content, please, please hit that subscribe button. Totally free for you to do, but it means a huge amount for me. So thank you for that in advance. As I said, this is very much personal opinion. If you can try something out beforehand, please do so. Uh, but, uh, but I have used this. I own all these items. I'm using them on a daily basis and they work great for me. You've been watching The Ghost Owl and I'll see you all very, very soon.